Hello everyone, thank you for joining the FIMS AME presentation today. Um, so FIMS AME project has been established for the last uh, two years and at the onset of the project the goals of that, this, uh, this interface were to allow for a consistent manner for multiple AME products to define a standard interface that could be used by clients. Um, as of today, there are not that many AME tools, although the market is changing, there's vast amount of content that exists. So, as I was just mentioning before, that the market space has definitely changed in terms of uh, a lot of content that exists. However, there's very little ways for companies to be able to monetize on all the vast content that exists. So there's going to be a a, a brand new market space that is going to open up for a lot of different vendors that can possibly allow for extraction of metadata, one of which is AME. So for the presentation today, there's going to be a very high level overview of what is FIMS. So for many of the people that might not have heard of what FIMS is, uh, just kind of touch upon it. That's not the intent of what this presentation is. The presentation today is really just to outline what the current status of the AME interface project for FIMS currently stands. Uh, so we'll go into the general information about FIMS, what is FIMS AME, what the FIMS AME status is, and what the next steps are. So let's begin. As of today, there are multiple FIMS groups. There's the admin group, there's the business board, that's on the top. Then you have the technical board, which is defined of multiple FIMS uh, you know, projects that are currently underway. There's the architecture console uh, led by Richard. There's the FIMS repository, FIMS AME, FIMS QA, FIMS semantic, FIMS streams, FIMS test platform. As you could tell, I mean, there's a lot of uh, interfaces that, that exist and AME is in some ways supposed to follow the same patterns and practices which have been established previously in other interfaces as well. So. One of the goals eventually for FIMS is really to allow for adoption to be in such a consistent way that as new interfaces come online, there are not multiple implementations, yet you're kind of extending the existing BML structure to be able to allow the different interfaces to leverage what they need to do. So let's go into the, the definition. So this is just a very, again, high level overview of FIMS. So there's the vision, which is really the plug and play. And, um, you know, even in NAB, as you walk around today, there's a lot of companies that are really pushing for having their components, which can really plug into any infrastructure that exists. There's adapters, there's plugins inside of existing applications, et cetera. So for FIMS, the goal really is, is for empowering the client to be able to use what is the best breed of products within their infrastructure, rather than, you know, being very tied to whatever they've purchased in the past. So it's really supposed to allow for the interoperability. So the concept is again within the media industry because there is such a void that exists for the standardization of communication between various products and client uh, tools. It's really to set some sort of an industry pattern and practice in place as well so that clients and, and vendors are really communicating in uh, a consistent way. The approach is using SOA, so it's not a brand new concept. It has existed within the technology space for a very, you know for a very long period of time. However, within the media industry itself, it's still I don't want to say relatively new. It's it's now definitely known, but it's definitely getting clients to to start using these concepts as well, so that they could really learn what the power and the benefits are from an SOA architecture. So let's go over just a little bit for what a FIMS asset is composed of. So a FIMS asset really at the higher level is the BM content. The BM content has uh, basic editorial metadata about the asset, such as uh, several IDs. There's the title description. Then within there, you have the BM content format, which essentially has information about the various formats that are composed of an asset. An asset is no longer just a file, obviously. I mean, in order to monetize, you can't monetize off of a physical file that exists on storage somewhere. You also have to have metadata around it as well. So that's where the content format allows you to extract certain information. And 
then you have the essence locator. So again, with the cloud being in place, with archive being in place, and an asset really existing in various locations, if one location ever has an issue, you should be able to quickly locate where the essence actually exists. So you're able to, again, locate it for the main purpose of monetization. So with the existing BMO, as I mentioned before, there's basic set of properties that exist, but from client to client, there are various use cases and you have different properties as well. So the BMO structure does allow for a client to be able to extend the BMO structure to identify certain attributes, which may be specific to the business needs of the client, such as putting in information as far as what the production cost is. And the extension can really be put at every level of the BMO as well, because it really does allow for the extensibility. Information such as mezzanine, and you could be driving workflows, for example, based off of certain properties and metadata attributes to uh, really orchestrate a workflow which is really metadata driven rather than file driven. So let's go into, now that we've talked and uh, I've covered over the FIMS AME, as you could tell, FIMS AME is really just another interface in the FIMS world. And the idea being it's like Lego pieces. I don't know why the screen keeps going off. But uh, it's like Lego pieces where tomorrow you want to be able to define a particular shape. You can basically um, go back in, just build a block, and just put it back in again and without losing a step, right? So that's obviously comes from the interoperability and the model that has been described for all the various interfaces themselves, which leverage the BMO. So what is FIMS? What is FIMS Automated Metadata Extra Extraction, also known as AME? And uh, within the AME, it provides an interface supporting automated semantic technical metadata extraction from audiovisual content. So what does that mean? I mean, there's uh, technical metadata such as media info, where you can extract various information off of the physical content. You can extract it and then store that information back inside the BMO. They can also be semantic metadata, such as if it's a sporting event, what the location of the sporting event is, who the particular person is that is, uh, you know, for example, in soccer, the person who is Ronaldo, for example, could be the semantic metadata that you may be, may be able to extract automatically. So within AME, as I was mentioning before, you might have a lot of content which may exist and you want to basically monetize. In order to do that, you need to be able to get information such as scenes, faces, the format properties, closed captioning, speech to text. All of this information, once it's gathered, really does allow for searchability and be able to locate the content as you need. Um, it does also align with the Sky Group as well, which is led by Mike Matten. So they were doing an evaluation of the various um, AME tools and products and really essentially establishing what are the best products for the industry that can be leveraged and used by, by clients. And uh, so we're going to be partnering with that group as well to really look at what are the various products that exist so that once we do have the interface in place, we can go back to those uh, vendors and allow them to use the standard and give us feedback, and as well as allowing for contribution from them as well. So certain examples of AME, as I was mentioning before, are scene detection. So let's look at an example of what that means. Again, I apologize. I don't know why the screen keeps going off. But one example could be from time code 1 to time, time code 2. You could have a person A where the face is detected and the person is playing football, right? That's, that's now information that you have gathered automatically from the tool, and that's the secret sauce that you have within these tools, right? You could also have, now, not only that, the fact that you have content that's sitting, you can now detect the Ronaldos in there. So again, if uh, in the future there's any coverage that needs to happen, you can quickly, based off extracting the semantic metadata, be able to leverage this information and quickly gather the content for distribution and really monetize again. I mean, that's, that's, that's the name of the game over here is quickly access the information that is sitting where, you know, in the old days, it was all file driven and content just needed to get delivered. And at the time, there was not much attention that was being paid towards the metadata as well. Um, and then, so there are various examples of what AME can do, but going back into how it fits back into the, the, the 
FIMS model itself, it's yet another service that can just be plugged in. So let's see, the FIMS automated me metadata extraction group information. So it is composed of 30 members. It was established in August of 2014. We reviewed the business charter, reviewed what are the features and requirements of the must-have, nice-to-have, and then there was an alignment that needed to be done because at the same time there were various projects in place such as the FIMS timecode and the FIMS QA group. And uh, one of the reasons to also uh, wait for some of those projects to also complete as well was because there was some information that could be leveraged from what those groups did in terms of establishing the interfaces that could be applied towards the AME as well. So let's look at some uh, FIMS objective of what um, AME is all about. So there's information inside of AME that is both temporal and spatial, right? So you could have information that's time code specific. It could also be where in, within one scene something is detected. It could be in a particular, that's where your spatial metadata comes in. And we need to basically be able to allow metadata extraction on media asset parts. Now, what does that mean? You might not want to basically be able to run AME on certain time codes within, let's say, a 30-minute clip that you have. You may want to only extract AME information for five minutes of the 30 minutes. And again, going back and just reinforcing the same concept again, it really is the FIMS AME services are going to be leveraging what the existing FIMS model is all about. You know, there was a lot of emphasis that was put on the forefront of the creation of the FIMS BMO, and we don't want to just discard that each time a new interface comes on board. It really is to leverage what we could do so that we are not reinventing the wheel, so to speak. So as part of what has been done so far for the AME, we have reviewed the FIMS QC service model. We've reviewed the AME uh, capabilities repository. There's the AME request and the AME response. So at a higher level, we've uh, looked into the FIMS QA model and really looked at that for the AME purposes and, and seen what parallel information can be extracted for the AME that's similar to, I apologize, I have no idea what's going on right now uh, for the screen. But we've really truly tried to leverage again for the FIMS QA model that was developed for the AME as well because there was a lot of parallel for QA and for AME except that inside of QA there's a report that gets generated that can then be human read or it could be system interpreted for actions that can be taken as opposed to AME could just hydrate a BMO object and that information could then just be sent into a FIMS repository for example so now you have all the information hydrated within a BMO for access later on. So the request and the response were both leveraging what work had been done for the QA models. And as, uh, what was, as what was mentioned before, we are collaborating with the EBU Sky Group in discussion as far as don't want to discard the work that they're doing and the effort that they've put in as far as looking at and evaluating what the different automated metadata extraction tools that exist and uh, really looking for input from them as far as what are the top types of AME, you know, presets or profiles that should be executed at the forefront because it is such a vast amount of, uh, you know, presets that you could define for AME, but we really wanted them to help us define and prioritize the work that should be done for the AME group as well. So Jean-Pierre is representing EBU in the discussion. Mike Matten is the chair for the EBU Sky and uh, myself as the chair for the FIMS AME group. We've been collaborating to ensure that we're making good progress. So the work that has been done for the FIMS AME so far, uh, you know, as mentioned before, was to look at the business charter, to define the user stories, to extract technical requirements from the project, prioritize work, and where we are right now is hoping uh, to finalize the models that will be for the request, the response, what the report can look like for AME, and at least start coming up with a model that can grow over time which can be adopted by various vendors within the AME uh, space. And then obviously, no different than anything else, but to update documentation, give sample guidelines and reference implementations 
and then get the sign off from the, the uh, FIMS council as well, the chair council. So the next slide over here is just going to really show how you know, the FIMS AME is fitting into a workflow that you could have. So coming into post-production, for example, you could have a repository in production where you can have an asset that can flow through the QC process. It can then be transferred. It could be transcoded. It could be transferred again. You can extract AME and then store it inside of another repository after the AME information has been extracted. And at the heart of it all is still the BMO. So the BMO is really just carrying all this information from one FIM service to another very seamlessly without having to you know, do any translation of any sort between the various services. This is, again, just a different representation of the same thing as far as where AME can fit in. And in this case over here, we're, we're going to encode content. We can get the AME from the content. We can store it, transfer it, transcode it, get AME for the newly transcoded, and then you know, transfer it for distribution again. So the next steps for AME right now are to finalize the response model, finalize the ASCR, which is the, uh, the the uh, AME capabilities repositories, identify the FIMS AME faults exceptions, as well as document uh, the AME ACR request response and the guidelines. So essentially it's really the, the final product that can be used by various vendors and clients and uh, the goal really is, is hopefully towards the end of this year to have something in place which can be leveraged and at least we can get feedback from the various people as well. So if any more information is required, you can go to the FIMS wiki, which is just disappeared. And uh, you can also go to the FIMS.tv site as well. And if you have any other information or you're interested in joining any of the FIMS groups, not necessarily just FIMS AME, you can send an email to the FIMS underscore ADM at list.ebu.ch. And by doing that, you can become a member and a contributor to the future of uh, media. Thank you.